let's talk about your story here, since that's where we kind of started off. And when you go back to, the, to that night in 2016, because with Wichita State, you know, that, that, was, that was national profile. You weren't, yeah. you know, you, you got on, on CBS now and again. You, you guys were a tournament team. When that night slipped through and it didn't happen, what were you thinking to yourself? What was your support team saying to you? Like, what was the message? Uh, right in that moment, I think everybody was a little bit uh, disappointed. Obviously, you build up for so long, what, 18, you know, 19, 20, 21 years of your life for that moment to hear your name called, walk across the stage, shake the commissioner's hand. And so there's an initial letdown of, you know, like wanting to be in that position and then you turn back into a professional and say, all right, what's next? And for me, I initially looked to Summer League and was like, I'm gonna go out there and, and make something happen in Summer League. And um, it just so happened that the Raptors were the choice I ended up making and taking and you know, the rest is history. How quick was the turnover? Because I would imagine that if I was ever in that spot, it would take me a little while before I said, let's go work. Uh, yeah, I mean, a few hours, like, really? I had a draft party, a huge yeah. draft party, I um, told this story before, and I was on the phone and, you know, with agents and figuring out what I'm going to do next, and so I, I my whole family and friends, and it seemed like the whole city was there, and it didn't happen, and, and you go right into the next phase and the next thing, and so uh, you enjoy that night, I celebrate, I think I did 18 workouts in 30 days, so I was celebrating that journey and that process, my college career drank a little bit, uh, had a good night, and woke up the next day and, and got back, back to work and right. was looking forward to coming to Toronto. Awesome. So the, the bet on yourself, I'm, I'm curious, obviously there's a lot of payoffs in the bet on yourself. It's not just one payoff. Right. But was making your first start in Chicago, an hour away from home, one of those payoffs with family and friends? Because I would assume a couple weeks back, November 17th, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. That would kind of be a cool moment for yeah. you, having been undrafted, being an hour away, having that party you just talked about, and then starting on the Bulls floor. 100%. And, you know, a along your life, there's things of how your story goes. And for me, the bet on yourself thing, yeah, it, it probably was born in that moment of not being drafted. But there's stories since I was five years old until now where you could apply that. And so. There's going to be stories the rest of my life that I can apply it to as well. And that was one of those things where, like, all right, just two years ago, three years ago, I was sitting there with, with you know, trying to figure out what I was going to do, right. being undrafted. And, you know, flash forward, I'm on the best team in the NBA making my first start, you know, an hour away from home in the United Center of all places. You know, we know the history there. As a young Illinois kid growing up, and you, can't, you can't write the story better than that. But there is, there is immense power. In, in, in the thought of, they don't know what I know. Exactly. And how far did that take you in this journey? How important is that? It's my whole life. It's, it's uh, for better or for worse, right? I mean, and it came out of necessity. It was born out of necessity where I didn't have a choice. I didn't have big people behind me or big corporations or whatever the case may be. I never had the hype machine behind me. So I'm just that guy in the corner who really believes that he's just as good or better than everybody and you know you got to go out there and prove it obviously you got to put the work in and all those things but I mean for me it, can, it was born out of nobody believing in me I had to believe in myself and obviously it's evolved into something greater than that but uh, yeah it can go a long way for sure. We've talked a lot about drafting and more importantly developing talent in the NBA and there seems to be two paths now there's the one and done kids that go to major schools the Dukes, the Kentuckys of the world, and then are drafted really high. And then yeah. there's this other world where there's a bunch of four-year colleges making hay, like the one that you went to, yeah. Wichita State, Greg Marshall, shout out, doing some big things. Yeah. You see Gonzaga now, the number one team in the country, yeah. a lot of four. Do you think that there's a right path and a wrong path for certain kids? And do you think you would be where you are now if you were a five-star recruit? and maybe that guy that was one and done. There's no uh, perfect path, I'll yeah. say that. There is right and wrong paths for individuals. Right. So some kids, you know, but that's up to that kid or right. what he wants to do and how do you tell an 18-year-old kid to go to school for four months and then sign a $10 million deal? Like, yeah. come on, who's, how can you turn that down? But is the system not broken a little? 
Like uh, if, you, if you could change it, what, would you do anything to it? No, I don't. I don't. I don't mind it. I think that we we get away because we're all sports fanatics and we love the game so much and the pure essence of the sport. But let's not kid ourselves. It's a business here, so yeah. don't turn down opportunities for people because we have this. We hold on to this thing of oh, it has to be so pure. No, it's a business for everybody else. It should be the same way for players. So the option to do what you want should be there. And hey, if there's a team out there that wants to draft a young kid. It's up to that team and that kid to make it work or not work. It's not his fault if somebody wants to give him money. It doesn't happen in any other business in the world. But my, my point might be more that it might service a lot more kids to go a little bit long. Whatever the development yeah. plan is, yeah. to have a little bit more. Because we fawn over these one and dones yeah. and we end up in situations where these kids aren't developed because yeah. they think that they're already there yeah it's a man's league for yeah. sure don't get it twisted <laughs> yeah. right regardless of if you get drafted right away and there's outliers of guys who just it's that good are that good yeah. and that big and strong but it takes time it takes three four or well, five one of years those guys, i can give you three who did the at a high school thing yeah and it didn't quite work yeah. out 100%. Like, like i just don't think i don't think high school is i don't think you can allow it i just don't listen lebron's are going to come around once every 25 years yeah. or whatever I just, I've always been up to you. if you're that good. So, so, I mean, <laughs> but, but how many kids are that good? P kids are told they're that good. So, so what's, so like, uh, so just, you yeah, know, uh, RJ Barrett and Zion or whatever, you know what I mean? They're going to Duke. Like, what's, for those two who probably could play in the NBA or D League or whatever for a few years, the other kids who aren't good just go to school. If they want to try their luck and go to the NBA and it doesn't work, that's kind of on them. I don't, I don't know what's the the overall concept of of holding them back from that. Like, it's, I think the responsibility should be more on the teams in terms of like, all right, he's good enough or he's not. And if this kid doesn't work out in three or four years, a bust or whatever you want to call it, he made some money, he played basketball for a living. He made some money, but now he's, like in, back now he's in Lithuania trying to play for the rest of his career. <laughs> it's not the worst Nothing thing. Nothing against Lithuania. It's not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> well, it was good for, for the balls for a while, but I mean, I, I it's just... It's not the worst thing in the world. It's not. You make some money. You yeah. know, it is. It's, it's a pro career. You do yeah. well. But uh, I don't know. I just, you know, look, NFL, you wait a couple of years, you come out. Yeah. Everyone seems okay with that, right? Now, I know it's two different I'm sports. I'm going Fred. I might be with you on this. I might be separated. I might be, like, shifting this seat over yeah, from my co-host, which I do. Side, yeah. Yeah. Pick it on up. No. But, like, Whatever. You want to agree with Fred, that's fine. <laughs> we, won't, we won't disagree completely. But I'm saying if yeah. you're good enough, you make valid points. You make valid points. But I'm also points. selfish yeah. in that you bring up. I'm like, just saying that have, it's not the greatest way to develop players. You're, chair, you're making to, me nervous. To send them to the NBA right away. Yeah. But whatever method works, obviously, I think four years worked to yeah. develop you. Yeah. I look at Pascal Siakam, another guy yeah. drafted late, not fawned over. Look, to each his own. You're right. Yeah. Like, I'm with Three you. Years. Years. And no, no one's situation is the same. Right. Different family backgrounds, different different cities. It, it's all different. Right. But as a sports fan, I want to see, and we've had R.J. Barrett in the studio. Yeah. I want to see Zion and R.J. play a second year. Okay. I'm Just not as a mad sports at that. fan. I'm you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It is, but like you said earlier, yeah. it's coming from a self. Yeah, <laughs> it's coming no. from a self. But listen, <laughs> listen to what I'm saying is, from being in the NBA now for three years, I can guarantee you how much better those two would be training in the NBA every day, all day. No question. Focusing about on it. your body. Like, developing is not even close. So, yes, we all love college basketball and we want to watch those guys dunk on people for <laughs> five, ten years. You know what I mean? It's fun yeah. to watch, but I don't know if there's a perfect system where we could say they should do this or shoot that. My overall message is there's no right a wrong right. answer is just a matter of personal preference. I just think that we should loosen ourselves up a little bit to the idea of like not trying to control people's destinies. You know, let, it's it's got to be on them a little bit. Right. And on, and on the pro teams. All right, Hulk, yeah. I'm going to join him. Uh, <laughs> you're making great points. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join him again. So let me ask you this, because mm -hmm. I, I look at what you're doing in the community. I look what you're doing yeah. with sick kids. I look what you're doing back home uh, in, in Illinois which is hard to say, in yeah, Illinois. Yeah. Um, did your grind to get to where you are make you feel like it was more important to do stuff in the community? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think that, like you said, the way I came up and being from uh, making it out of a place that's probably less fortunate and uh, growing up in that type of environment, you see the pros and cons to having people in the community. So when I when I got to college, I, I looked around and said, okay, what I just did for 18 years isn't normal. Like, right. people shouldn't have to live like that. They shouldn't have to do this. So 
I had college camps where we had 350 kids in the gym and the parents paid $350 for them to come and all these things and it's just like it's a different world, almost a culture shock. So when you go back home, you try to take some of those things that you learn and implement it into a different community. And um, I wish that I had more uh, leaders and, and people I could look up to and talk to and reach you know, immediately versus just seeing people on TV. So um, that's a part of, of what I believe in now is, is being reachable and, and giving back, whether it's money or time or just going into a basketball camp, you know, every now and then just being out there. You know, you talk, may talk to one kid for 30 seconds, that probably could change his life. Right. You're, yeah, are, you, are you finding that? Because I, I would imagine someone in your position, a full-time nba -er, um, the story you've had, you, you, I, I would anticipate you can impact young people in a very strong way. Do you get the sense when you talk to kids? Yeah, somewhat, right? You, you reach who you can, and there's certain kids that I probably will never reach, but for the ones that I can, whether it's one person out of a hundred, you know, that one is going to make a difference somewhere along the line. And Like I was saying, I just remember the coaches and the mentors and stuff that I had along the way, whether it was a basketball camp when I was eight years old, I remember it vividly to this day, so I know how that would resonate with a kid if, if I could have met an NBA player when I was nine, you know what I mean? I would have listened to anything he said. And so while I, while I have their attention, you know, I'm gonna try to give them some gems and the information or whatever, whatever the case may be that can help them along the way. We would be remiss if we had you in here and didn't talk about this uh, 20 and five I can't believe we haven't team. brought it up yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, but before we let you go, yeah. how good do you think you guys can be? Because obviously you've seen regular season success. Yeah. How different is it this year, or is it different at all yet? Uh, we won't know. Yeah. We don't know. I mean, we had a great regular season last year. We're having a great regular season this year. I will say it feels a lot different, whether that means anything to you or not. In what way? How does it I, I don't, feel different? It's a different team, first and foremost. Like, the roster makeup is different. I don't think we really pay attention to how much one or two or three or four pieces here and there can make a difference on the team, if you just look around the league. Um, so I don't know, I feel like we're taking a better approach this year in terms of not grinding so hard on every single day and letting every single day be the emotional roller coaster. Like, all right, this is a long process. We're playing well, or not really playing that well, but we'll keep it here. We're winning. Yeah. Let's fix some things along the way. We'll win and during the end we'll turn it up and, and see where the chips fall. So I'm excited. We can be really good championship level team. It's just when the lights come on in, in April, May, and June, we got to prove it. I, Shockingly, Fred thinks he's got to put the work in <laughs> to get there. <laughs> i got to be honest. I think you can coast. <laughs> no, uh, no think, that's not the message that's at all. Got there. Well, yeah. well, so if the playoffs started today, is there a team in the East that could beat you guys at the best of seven? Yes or no? Uh, listen, <laughs> I don't, I, it's okay. not my thing. So I'm going to say on any given night, anybody can get beaten. I'm not one of those guys who... Oh, please be one of those guys. No, I'm, I'm not. I, I don't like the, that, the thing we're doing now where guys just go on TV or, or interviews and say crazy stuff. You know, we respect everybody. Uh, we feel really good about our chances. And, you know, I like our, I like our chances towards the end. See, see we, we get along here because I, I believe, and don't let me speak for you, I believe that Fred thinks that he earns it. It would, it would be evidenced 100%. by the, I, I the scholastic <laughs> career, at which time yes. I believe it would be evidenced by his entire NBA career. You go out there and you earn it. Yeah, come on, man. By the way, thank you for those of Wichita State Sweet 16s that helped me out in the bracket. <laughs> yeah, by the way, yeah, I do yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, how do, uh, the gear. Yes. You got the best. I don't want to get anyone else mad in the Raptors room. You got the best logo in the room. Okay. <laughs> so how do how do people get a hold of that if they want some some uh, yeah gear. something I started uh, my rookie year along the way along the story um, I won't sell it too much here but uh, have a website fvv23.com yep, we got it up. and uh, yeah FVV shop as well so we're in the middle of transitioning um, our site and getting some new stuff up and going there and shop uh, be careful with the with the uh, Postal strike thing that's been going on lately in Canada. Yeah, we're fixing it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, do want to uh, yeah. warn people about that. We've been dealing <laughs> with that, but um, we got some of that stuff. And you know, if you, if you like it, go get it. If not, you know, no big deal. I like people that support me, and and I support them. So, um, 
Oh, what's Brought you guys here? a little gift what here. Oh, nice. I was going to say, I might have to hope, go get the flips yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully you can fit it. And it'll match. Brought them a little, you know. Well, a, a I, doubt little I doubt it'll fit either of us. But. Hold yeah. on. Is, is it a schmedium? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. We'll yeah. see. Thank you very much, sir. Hope you guys can fit it. It's a large. Oh, nice. No, yeah. I could squeeze into this. <laughs> um, listen, Fred, we... Honestly, I know we didn't talk too much Raptors per se. Yeah. And I'm kind of, I'm not disappointed because your your story is inspirational. You have busted your ass. You are you are an NBAer. You've known that since you were young that you were going to be an NBAer. Right. And I'm, I'm glad that you're here. And Thank I, you. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate you guys, Thank man. You. Thank in. you. There is Fred Van Fleet.